my topic is bringing power to the people, and I'm going to focus on solar. Now, in Africa, I believe that as custodians, as, as youth, as custodians of our future, as people who live on the continent and experience these power cuts every day, it's up to us to bring solar to, to, to our continent, to our communities, and to, to our country. So in, in light of the subject of the matter, shared value in SDGs, I'm going to tell you a bit about the story of oxygen, how we came about to be, and hopefully through my story, you can see the opportunities in the shared value business model, the challenges we would have as an African-based IPP to bring power, and hopefully it may give you ideas so you, so you can take them away and implement them in your own projects. So my company, Oxygen Energy, started in 2013. Um, it started off as Our Sun Energy to develop um, grid-connected solar plants that feed power into our national grid with an offtake from ZESA, which is the equivalent of ESCOM. That project failed very badly, right? And when we say failed, they changed the licensing legislation based upon what we did wrong in the country. <laughs> now, <laughs> the, the danger with that is, as a young entrepreneur, starting a company with a zero-based budget. I'd put everything into it, my properties, my savings from my previous company. I was working with Sogo Sun, and all of a sudden you wake up and you have no project, you've lost everything. You've got five warehouses full of solar panels, basically imported about 140 foot, 140, 40 foot containers worth of solar panels. KFW and German, KFW, FMO, and DEG told us in 10 minutes we will not fund this. So I go home, I'm living, I'm living with my mom, I've lost everything, what should, I, what should I do, should I go back to work? Then I picked up an old MOU, we, we, we signed with Old Mutual to do solar on their roof, right? So I asked for a meeting, they called for the meeting on a Thursday, I don't have a car, I only have about $5 in my pocket, I live in Marindera, it's 80 kilometers outside Harare. So basically to get to Harare is $2, then to get from where the combi drops you off, it's another 50 cents, because it's about nine kilometers to the old mutual headquarters, but that morning, the price of the combis had gone up to 250. <laughs> I get to Harare, and um, I said, look, I got no choice, I'll walk to old mutual. So I walked to old mutual, then there was Gil Gil Gilbert Gumbo, the head of properties, Gibson and a couple of other guys, and I said, look, I can put solar on your roof. It's going to be about 3.2 megawatts. It's going to cost 5 million. And I have this money right now. I can do it today. This is someone who had to walk and didn't have money. <laughs> so we started going back and forth for quite a while. And they were looking through about 37, 37 uh, offers during the time that I was pitching and trying to convince them that, look, I will fund solar on your roof. I will become your second IPP. I will sell you power on a 20-year power purchase agreement, and I will take on the financial and the technological risk against an old mutual offtake. Now, one month, they spent about $10,000, that's about 127,000 rand, on diesel for the generator alone because there was no power. To put it into context, during that period, they were, spend, they were buying just for the generators for power, they were spending 16 million US, United States dollars to buy 12 million liters of diesel. So I get a call, Simba, where are you? You said you have the panels, can you do this particular project? Then I had to be honest, look guys, I lost the panels, and, but I can find the money. <laughs> <laughs> so they gave me a letter, and Old Mutual is very good at writing letters that are committal but non-committal. They said, look, you go find the money. So I then turned to my friend Lionel. Lionel buys me um, a plane ticket to come to, to pitch to APSA. I got a meeting with APSA Capital and I only had a plane ticket and, and a car train card and no money. My friend Nyasha had to give me $10 to print my business cards. So I come to APSA, I pitch my project, but project financing is a lengthy and expensive process. That if you're not well healed like a developer, there's no way that you're going to achieve it. Anyway, APSA said they'll help me out, and when, they say, when we said APSA will help me out, the company profile we still use today was drafted by APSA. We just removed the logo. So they structured my project, told me how to finance it. Standard Bank also stepped in and said, look, but the problem is we cannot finance $5 million. 
it has to be a minimum of 10 million each. So your project has to be ideally 20 megawatts, right? So I then reached out to um, a lawyer that had done due diligence for me before called Stephen Gamble with Norton Rose, and he said, look, we can walk into these offices and we can present your idea based upon our apps and standard bank have structured it and see if you'll get financial commitments. So we got term sheets worth $30 million. Then went back to Old Mission and said, look, I can't do the project, but I've got a problem. I have to come up with 20 megawatts and this is my proof of funding, right? I said, okay, sure. Um, let's, let's, let's start to have a discussion about you doing the entire property portfolio. So that was initially the genesis of how um, together with developing a 20 megawatt project is going to cover 216 buildings and the power is going to be purchased for Old Mutual on behalf of their tenants that are largely SMEs. You've got a couple of corporates in there like your pick and pays, your Deloitte's, but largely it's SMEs. And so when we, so Old Mutual signs on, now we've got a problem because for me to draw down on that, on that, on that debt, I need to find about $6 million in equity, which I didn't have. So Old Mutual said, no, not a problem. We will fund you part of your equity and we'll take 26% of your company. We don't want to manage it. We don't want any, any, any control, but this should help you leverage and find the balance of the equity. So with that, we started reaching out to various developmental partners in that particular process. Now, because of that, we then went to, oddly enough, to UNDP and said, look, Old Mutual, now Old Mutual in Zimbabwe has a, has a history of taking leadership on national issues. So how they viewed it was, we're solving a national issue of, problem, of power in line with what we'd call Zim Asset, which was the government's social, economic, sustainable agenda. So we're gonna take off 20 megawatts off the national grid, and hopefully we save the country, because their target was 300 megawatts by 2018. We've got a young entrepreneur that we're going to empower, and then he's going to basically um, develop into, an own, into a homegrown IPP and scale up his project, right? So we went to UNDP and said, look, we're passionate about SDGs. Can we work with you or can you help us get, can you help us find ways so that we can leverage on the SDGs to, to basically raise our funding? To our surprise, UNDP said, no, we don't work with private sector. So we, we then went to our Ministry of Environment and they said, look, what you guys are doing is good. They gave us an endorsement to say, look, as old mutual and, and oxygen, you guys are, are driving clean energy, Decent, um, um, decent work, economic growth, climate action, and they gave us the UN endorsement. And using that, we then, I then started to apply for a grant. Now, the reason why is most, most well-heeled developers, when they come into Africa, they have a lot of concessionary funding, grant funding, etc., to basically do R&D, to do their projects. Where would I get it from? So I started a process with Africa Development Bank that took 16 months. And one of the processes was that they have to do due diligence on the project. They have to meet with the old mutual stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. So we had applied for 600,000 in this regard. AFDB guys come, and the first meeting they had to say, before we even talk to old mutual, we have to talk to ZESA, which is the equivalent of ESCOM, because we need to know if they are willing to allow you to take one of their customers off their, their books and supply energy directly. We walk in, we were applying for 600,000, but to our surprise, Zessa then did the pitch for the grant for us, and it was increased to 1.2 million, which we eventually got. But then there was a problem. Because we're a startup, we cannot manage the grant as per, you know, the DFIs, they've got very stringent requirements. So Zessa, the equivalent of ESCOM, actually wrote to AFDB and said, no, we will manage this grant for him. Just give him the money. So now, what, one thing we had to do was then we had to innovate in that we needed to make the project bankable. I can't basically take risk on 1,000 SMEs, right? So Old Mutual said, look, we will purchase the power from you as a single entity. So basically, you will take Old Mutual risk. And then as Old Mutual Investments, we will invest in your company and take equity risk. So pretty much, you're selling power to yourselves. So with that innovation, we used that same model, and we approached another bank that Old Mutual owns, and we said, look, let's innovate in the finding. You guys require three megawatts worth of power across 74 branches. It's similar to a net bank. Why don't you give me the loan? Why? Because I'm putting power on your roof to service you. Unless, of course, you want the example of, a, of a, let's just say, a Capitec or a APSA going to put solar on a net bank. That's not going to happen. But I sort of used an NMB. We've got a bank called NMB. 
I sort of used their term sheet to, to, to say to this bank and say, look, guys, I'm going to put solar on your roof over a, with a bank that is smaller than you. Are you going to allow that to happen? So they gave us a, they gave us a term sheet of $3 million, and basically where the innovation is, they will have to pay oxygen $600,000 a year in electricity costs. But, they will make back, but we will pay them back half a million to service their loan. So from the three million that they're using to power their own bank branches, they're going to yield four million. They're actually going to make money from the electricity that they use. Right? Now, Old Mutual, being a pension fund manager, most of their tenants, are their pension funds are managed by Old Mutual. So we said, okay, why don't you talk to your pension funds and have them, through you, invest into the project. That way, our innovation was your, the off-taker, the client, must also be the co-investor in this power project through us. We will be that Chinese wall. We will take the technological and operational risk. But the, in essence, you will make money from your own electricity. That's essentially our, our innovation. But in this, you have several challenges as, as a young entrepreneur, right? We want to basically champion SDGs in our continent. We want to be the custodians because the future really belongs to us. But how do, does a company like mine or a company like any other young entrepreneurs probably in the crowd compete with, for argument's sake, with an, with an now? The challenge is when you go to a bank, right, you go to Barclays, APSA, Nedbank, the same credit process that they use to approve oxygen is what they're going to use to prove a now. To give you, just to put it in context, our legal costs alone, just for the old mutual project, are half a million dollars in project finance. If there's a banker here, he would tell you. That's how expensive project finance is. So how are African youths going to find just half a million dollars in project finance? And before they start to look at your project seriously, you have to do a technical and bankability feasibility study, of which the bad part is you don't pick you don't pick who you're going to use. So I can't go to my friend who's a lawyer and say, can you drop the documents for me? I can't go to my friend who's an electrical engineer and say, can you please do the assessments for me? The bank will choose. And they usually choose the most expensive. If it's lawyers, your Hogan Lovells, your Trinities, if it's, if it's, your, it's your Arabs. So even just on the bankability study alone, you're probably going to have to fork out 400000 So my challenge to probably the generations before us, people in leadership positions, is you have to solve this problem. Because here's the bad part, right? Despite all the efforts I put in, I was always viewed with suspicion. Is he serious? Is he serious? But, you know, these fly-by-night business, you know, tenderpreneurs, how did he get it? I've had, I've had developers tell me straight to my face, how did you get this contract? Because basically our contract with Old Mutual is 20 megawatts with the option to scale up to 50. So we will pretty much solarize all their buildings. How did you, with no experience, get this contract? Who did you bribe? You got an environmental endorsement. Who did you pay? Right? Is the government allowing you to do this? The only time I actually got recognition is when I had to go all the way to Russia and then present my project to Vladimir Putin. And when he said, no, it's a good project, all of a sudden, no, no, this guy's serious. <laughs> But before that, you had to go through, I mean, we were operating in an environment here, but let's be quite frank. As much as we talk about startups, Africa is very unfriendly to startups. Look at East Africa. You've got your MCOPA, Solar Kiosk, Off-Grid Electric, um, uh, Mobisol, B-Box. They, they've got hundreds of millions of dollars in funding to come and solve a problem of electricity on our continent of solar home systems. So are you telling me that on this whole continent, no one could figure out that you can get a Chinese light and a little controller, plug in your phone, and give someone a loan over two years? Are you telling me that's impossible? No one could have figured that out on this continent. There's something seriously wrong. And it's also a model that's not sustainable. Because what happens, how many of you have ever bought these solar lights? How long does it last? Two years? Probably one year, right? So after one year, someone in the rural areas has to buy this thing again. So is it sustainable? 
but we load them and say they help, they're, they're helping power Africa. But if a young entrepreneur says, I want to put a five mega solar power plant in my village so that I can bring in your big, your big retailers, your, 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 your agricultural manufacturers, there's resistance. But we know what we need. I have a friend called, called um, William. He went to, he's from Zone 4 Energy, and he went to Google, and he went with a solar home system that had been turned into a candle stand and said, look, the solar home lights that you're funding hundreds of millions of dollars, this is where they end up. We use them as candle stands because they don't work. So we are being ignored to, produce, to, to provide solutions in our own country, and we're providing opportunities to people to come and solve our own problems. So Boniface was right. All the innovations come from outside as if we cannot innovate ourselves. But in 10 years' time, you're going you're gonna to ask Simba, why don't you care about SDGs? Why should I care about SDGs? They've done nothing for me. Let's be quite frank. Right? They've done nothing. So that's the question that I, I would pose and challenge to industry leaders, um, big corporates, say they've done nothing. Right? And I'll also take, um, and, and, be, and be well and truly honest, when we started a project, we wanted to go into rural areas. That was my passion. Put power into rural areas. So we went to, to the UN, USA, a couple of guys and said, look, I want to do this project. I can fund it, but if you give me the guarantee, I can have financing that is so low, we can deliver affordable power, right? So we can basically build all these microgrids. And we also had our rural electrification um, authority was on board and said, we will build the transmission line because it's within our mandate. They said no, right? Fair enough, they said no. We get a call a couple of months later. No, we need, we need a solar solution from you. Can you come in and can we talk? Sure. Now, they had been doing a project whereby dairy farmers get dairy cows, right? And they milk the dairy cows. They have to take them to market. But the problem is when you milk a dairy cow, right, you've got 20 minutes to put that milk in refrigeration before it goes bad, right? But they give a dairy cow to someone who lives an hour or two hours away from the nearest refrigeration. How does that work? but you have a room full of doctors. So I'm like, okay, sure, I can provide you with a solar solution, as I said. No, you need to provide it with a solar solution. You need, it, you need to make it bankable. Oh, and by the way, we're going to issue a tender for you to do it. Now, even if you do have a tender process, what usually happens is they will do an international tender process, pick the technology, someone comes and delivers it and goes away. But is that a sustainable model? It's not. So what do we do to change that mindset and say, look, guys, if we're going to be talking about shared value, sustainable development goals, who has to, who has to basically be the custodian of these, of, these, of, these, of, of these particular SDGs? Who's, for example, going to acknowledge Old Mutual to say, look, as Old Mutual, yes, you're a big corporate, but you've given it this opportunity to, 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 to power your community. What sort of even tax breaks can they get? They don't. You know? And they're also, they're also limited by their regulation. So even if a company like a, an APSA or a, a Barclays in my country or an old mutual wants to give me funding, the, regu the government's in question, they, or, the, or the, probably the central bank, the rules and regulations that they have for them inhibit them to do so. If you want to lend, make sure you lend to someone who's got collateral. I don't have collateral, you know? If you want to, if you want to provide project finance, do you have a project finance product that you've registered with the bank? No, you don't. And as soon as they try and find innovative ways, the, the governments will make an example of the company that supports you. So these are some of the challenges that we've noticed. And I think uh, my time is up. <laughs> so hopefully from my story, you can, you can probably get some ideas, understand some of the challenges, know that we're passionate about what we do, and hopefully next year we have better stories to tell about our journey for shared value. Thank you very much. Thank you.